And that would have been a water source for thousands of years that was dependable. And uh, uh, I went down there a few, well, about a, two months ago before we got any rain, and it was still damp on the surface. And I took a photo of a, uh, a red spotted toad, one of their special uh, focus, not endangered, but a special focus uh, uh, species. And, uh, and this is probably towards the end of the summer. It was easy 110 that day, and there's a toad on the ground. So the desert is truly amazing. This is a site uh, in the McCoy Mountains, and we found this because of one of our solar projects. It was never recorded before that. Uh, it was recorded in 2013. Uh, and you see the scale bar there. The, the scale bar is about this long. So we have uh, so many of these petroglyphs on these rocks that you just couldn't just pick up and carry away. And I believe that has happened a lot in a lot of these sites out there over the years. When they become discovered, these disappear. Uh, they end up in people's yards, driveways, whatever. Question? I have a question. Um, is that area accessible to the general public or is it closed off? Like where you took the pictures and those ancient paths? Uh, yeah, anyone could drive to there if they knew where it was. I'm trying to keep it a secret, though. No, there is a DLM land. Is that public yeah. access? It's public access land, yeah. I can drive to within a quarter mile of that. So no one's trespassing? No, nobody knows where it is yet. And you walk at 110 degrees there? Oh, yeah. I'm a desert rat. I love the desert. And like I said, I can drive to within a quarter mile of there. So that's... I can, I can walk a quarter mile in uh, oh, yeah, 120 okay. degrees. All right, okay. And I have a, a backpack with ice water in it. You're prepared, you can go just about anywhere. Um, and there's some days it's even 115, 118. You've all been out here. <laughs> yes, another question. Uh, when those were made, was it on a big rock base and then it crumbled, or were they made was it on a little pieces? They were made on these small rocks. And uh, you see this one right here, you can almost barely see the, uh, the color difference between the, the black here, the, what we call a desert varnish, and, uh, and the light color. So we have a difference in patina on the rock. And when you're making a petroglyph, you're using a, a harder stone, like a piece of quartz, and you're pecking away, hammering on it in a pattern to remove uh, to remove the uh, patina for your design. Well, over uh, it takes about seven, eight thousand years for a freshly broken rock to get this color of patina, and when you remove it, it's white. So this is, the patina is actually starting to come back. So I would estimate that these petroglyphs we see here, uh, like this one and this one here, are several thousand years old. This one here is a little darker. There's some that actually look like a bottle relief where you don't see any color difference. You just see the, uh, the level difference. Those are probably uh, six, seven thousand years old. Another question? Do we know what the significance or the meaning of the writings and the carvings on these is? You can ask 15 different archaeologists and get 15 different answers. What do you think? Give us one. Uh, I think the artist knows what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I interpret it according to my own culture, Yes. our culture. So if I see something that looks like a, a gridded off um, rectangle, I call it an ice cube tray. <laughs> Who knows what they were thinking 10,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago? Ice cream tray. So, uh, and looking at this, that's a nice little abstract design, and it meant something to somebody a long time ago. It looks like it says Google. Yeah, you could probably see Google in there. I love that one. 
Uh, some of them are easily interpret interpreted. Uh, you see animal figures, you know they're in, representing animal figures. You just don't know why. This is a very special petroglyph. It's, uh, it's got the ice cube tray. Uh, you see the ice cube tray up here? Uh, you see this is a circle with rays coming out of it and a tail. It's either a flower or a comet. Uh, flowers you see every day. Comets you would you would record. You would write something down. So I kind of think it might be a comet, but I don't know. That's my guess. Here you see a cross with three toes on each end. So a four-legged bird. I don't know. <laughs> but now that one is dark. Right. Good, good note. Of, yeah. uh, very good. This not only is a petroglyph or three petroglyphs, this is also a grinding slab, a matadi. So these petroglyphs were carved in there a very long time ago because the patina is very dark. And the reason this is light is because they used a mono or a, a handstone to grind seeds. And that removed the patina. So the, the part that didn't get ground stayed dark. The part that did get ground uh, didn't get as dark. But it's getting dark again. And you can see a little bit of uh, light area right there. Like somebody came probably a few thousand years later and used that. So that's a really cool little or or artifact a little it's this big and it's about that thick and it's stone so it probably weighs about 70 80 pounds but you can see all these breaks along the edges here those were intentional breaks to relieve the weight so you, you're not going to carry that very far <laughs> uh, but you're going to carry it over into the shade maybe or you know within a few 50 60 feet maybe within the an area the size of this room. So uh, uh, it's has some of the weight has been removed, but it's still functional. And that's pretty common when you see a matate, you see uh, a little flaking, uh, flaked off rock all around the edges just to lighten the load a little bit. That kind of looks like a marine organism or a corn stalk or um, it could be a lot of things, right? A turtle. A turtle. A elongated turtle. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of contrast in that, telling me it's pretty old. And those are my feet there. <laughs> that is a million years old. It looks like an ancient measuring stick. Yeah. Well, that's the measuring stick. <laughs> measuring stick, measuring a measuring stick. How about that? Uh, this is the view from that site looking out towards Blythe. So Blythe is right down in here, and that's the Colorado River running through there. Mm. Now I know where you are. Now you know where I'm at. Yeah. Good luck finding that place. <laughs> You'll be surprised. <laughs> It doesn't look like that anymore because there's uh, there's two big solar plants out there in the middle. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, I took that picture just because I knew it wasn't going to look like that for much longer. Okay, and there's another trail. I can't even remember where that is now. <laughs> this is an area of really close to Desert Center. Uh, you can drive right to it. It's, uh, if the shadows fall just right, there's a big, huge power line. It casts a shadow right near here uh, towards the evening. Is that too much information? <laughs> but notice how light the patina is up here and how dark it is over here. 
and a little bit different over here. It's, uh, I still can't explain that. Maybe uh, there was another rock or there was a bush growing there covering it up from the sunlight. And uh, the way that patina develops is a chemical reaction with water and sunlight and the minerals in the rock and dust, airborne dust. So all of those variables can change in one rock just from one side to another. If it's exposed to weather, if it's exposed to, uh, uh, this right here is actually sitting almost level flat, so it would have been exposed to noontime sun had it not been covered up. So it's a kind of an interesting rock. I use that as an example for uh, people to say, I can, well, I can date uh, petroglyphs by the minerals. I think, well, okay, date this one. <laughs> I've come up with uh, probably three or four different dates on that, <coughs> wide ranging. That power line I was tall, talking about? Well, I didn't take a picture of the power line, I took a picture of this rock circle. Uh, rock circles out there in the desert are pretty common, and they're usually found where the trails run. So there's a trail system that runs through here, and there's the, uh, the big rock ring. And now the construction of these power lines, uh, I took this photo a while back, now there's another pair of power lines running along uh, between, between this one and this one. There's another one that looks just like this in between now. So that's to handle all the electricity coming out of the solar panels. <coughs> do you leave the, uh, the petroglyphs there or did you remove them? No, they all stay there. We can't, uh, uh, well the, the tribes would get very uh, angry if we remove anything like that. And future generations want to enjoy them as well. Uh, I want my grandkids to enjoy these things. So. You mentioned you put some stuff in your office. In certain things I will collect, but in the last uh, six years, seven years almost, I've been at the BLM at this office, I probably collected four artifacts. Just because maybe they were right next to a road, and I, I suspected they were going to disappear soon, and I'd never see them again. So uh, I collected and curated that. The other one was the 13,000-year-old Clovis point that I collected for research. Uh, and then a couple of others just because of their uniqueness uh, that I wanted to do some research on. Uh, never collected a petroglyph. Never had no reason to. I, I much prefer that they stay out there and future generations can enjoy the thrill of discovery of things like that just like I do. And again, another trail. This one is Palin Tank. Palin Tank is a site uh, I just discovered and recorded last December. And uh, uh, I followed this trail. And uh, if, you've all, if you've ever heard of a man named Dan McCarthy, he recorded many, 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 many sites out there. Um, and uh, he was, when he was doing his master's thesis uh, work, he would follow these trails and record them and record the sites along the way, of which there are hundreds out there that would have that Dan McCarthy signature at the bottom. Well, uh, when I went out there, I told Dan McCarthy, I said, I'm going to go out and update your site form for Palin Tang. He recorded it in 1978. And, uh, uh, the criteria for recording a site in 1978 and 2016 are big difference. We actually have digital cameras now. Uh, we can record things on, on computers uh, in color with photos. So many things we can do now that back then you went out there and recorded a site with a compass, an aerial photo, paper and pen. 
So I was going to go out there and update it, take some photos, uh, bring the site form, form that he originally recorded up to the standards we have today. Um, I didn't know what I was going to find, but let's see, we have uh, 